Howdy y'all, Fast Force 289, welcome back. In this video, we'll be working on my 1976 Ford truck and we're gonna be installing some door speakers as well as also installing a factory door speaker wiring harness kit from Dennis Carpenter. So let's jump into it. Okay, so I got the stuff laid out here on the hood to kind of give a good idea. Just I need something kind of big to work on. These hoods are massive, so I figured this would be a good little workbench. Temporary, you know, obviously. So this is your main harness here this will plug into your radio and then this goes out to the driver's side and this will go out to the passenger side here's the part number on that on that wire there alone if that's the only one you need and the good thing about dennis carpenter is he sells each one of these wires individually so you don't have to it's not a complete kit uh he's got a diagram to show you each wire and what it is and he gives you the part number but you can buy if you have factory AM FM radio in your truck already you just need to replace a wire or two you can just order that one wire instead of ordering all of it so that's the main wire and harness kit this one here i don't know if we're going to need yet or not i don't know if i'm going to use it yet or not because i may but there's the part number for it if you need it but this is what would hook to the radio and then you plug this into it but what i may do is because the two purples are ground i might just cut this plug off and splice the grounds and the positives in to the actual wires that's hooked up to the retro sound radio that i have but i'll figure that out once i get it installed and get it in there the door speakers that go from the cab to the door because this side goes toward the cab this side goes to the door where the speakers will go and there's the part number on that and it doesn't matter they're not size specific they're the same left and right you can see here same exact thing it's the same exact part number again same wiring and then this is what will go to your speaker here. So this will plug into this, obviously, and then this go down to your speaker. And there's the part number on that. And once again, not size specific, they're the same. So here's the other one just to show you, same part number. But there is the layout of that, and that's how it will look and how it goes into the truck. So now we've got to get inside and start tearing things apart. Okay, so we got to remove the door panel, get this all taken apart so we can get in here to put the speaker in. But also, we got to remove the dash because I got to run my uh, wiring harness up through here, wired into the radio, and all that. Got to pull the glove box out. As you can see, I already started on that. So, I got to pull the glove box out, pull the instrument cluster out, radio out, and pull the door panels off. So, I'm going to go ahead and start with getting the door panel disassembled, and then we'll move on from there. Also, note on my door panel, I got these screws in here. Usually, there's a cl there's clips on the back, but mine are broke, so these screws are just only thing holding mine on. If you still have your original water shield, or if you buy a new one, whatever, you got to cut out the hole for your speaker to go in. So we got to do that as well. After you do that, we can pull this off and get in here and get ready to start assembling our speaker setup and how we're going to do that. Now, this water shell is not in the best of shape, but what I'm going to do is take my razor blade and put it in here and cut it to hit the hole, edge of the hole. There's one. There's another one. Just do an X pattern. And we kind of got to cut out where it's going to be like that. Probably this thing is so old, just wanting to tear. Okay, so this is the speaker that I'm going to be running. It's a Sony six and a half inch speaker. It fits perfectly in the door. And there's the part number if you need it and all the information about it that you might want to know. I got these at Walmart. I think they were like $45, $49, something like that. This is what they look like. We're not going to need this, obviously. So this is the speaker. It's a really nice unit. I think it looks nice. And uh, Sony makes good stuff. I'm not uh, against Sony. I like Sony. I don't have anything against them. I think they make good stuff. 
There is only two modifications that I know of to make these speakers work in the doors without modifying the doors. Is these tabs right here to stick out, you gotta bend them straight up and down. So you just bend them up a little bit, all the way around. All these tabs that stick out like that, bend those up. And then these two holes here will work in the door, but you have to drill out a couple other holes down here. Not a big deal, simple. That's an eighth inch drill bit, I believe. And uh, that's all there is to it. Just to show you, this is how I do the tabs. I just grab one pair of pliers like that and just bend them straight up like that. You want them like that all the way around. Once you got all the tabs bent up like that all the way around, you'll be good to go to the next step. I'll come in here and get the top two screws started. So then I'll know exactly where it's gonna sit to mark the bottom two holes. All right, so once the screws are tight, I can't really show you because there's no good angle to get in there to it. But what I'll do is I'll take me an automatic center punch like this. Now, if you don't have automatic center punch, you can use something like a dowel and kind of scratch the paint on the back of this to tell you where to, to drill it. But I'll take an automatic center punch and I'll come behind the door or I'll come inside the door, I mean, like this. And I will feel for the bottom holes down here. You can feel them. And I'll stick the end of my punch in there and then just, once I realize I got it, Plus, you can see the bottom of the speaker move a little bit. But you know you're pushing on it. I'll just hold against the speaker and punch it. You can see our two marks. One right there and one right there. Grab me an 11 64th drill bit. Another thing we'll be adding is some of these here. They're called a boom mat. I picked these up at AutoZone. There's the part number if you want it, all the information on it. And all this is gonna do is gonna just slide right in that hole. And this right here will protect the speaker. It'll make it waterproof so if any water gets on, it won't get on the speaker. It insulates it and also improves sound quality because it'll force the sound out into the cab instead of being echoed out inside the hollow door. All right, once it's in, I'll take my automatic center punch again and get from the back and poke the holes. And I'll take my razor blade and trim around the perimeter to make it fit better. All right, so now with this installed, we gotta have a hole to run our wires to to hook our speaker to. So what I do is I grab my speaker and I set it up there to see where is this gonna go. And you can see how my terminals are gonna be on this side, closer to the end of the door, toward the front of the door. So I know it's not gonna be that far up there, but I want it to hold back a little bit. So I don't want it up on top. I don't want it directly on the side. I kinda want it down at an angle right here in the corner so the wires can come up but if any water gets on it, it's not running into this cone. It's going to run down and not in it. So I'm just going to pick a spot right about right about here and just poke a little hole through it just like that. And now it's clean. And this right here will cause it not to keep tearing. If you cut it, if you put a slit in here, it could potentially just keep tearing. You know, This right here cauterizes it kind of so it doesn't tear anymore. Okay, so this is the speaker wire. I went ahead and made me an extension to go on it because it wasn't quite long enough by itself, me having to route around here and come up inside this hole here. So I made a little extension, put my ends on here so I can plug it into my speaker. So it simply just fishes down to this hole here. And this tab will push right into that hole. Like so. And then we can plug it in when we put the uh, other wire going through here. Like so. Okay, so now we got to drill a hole in the door here to run our factory harness through. Now there, the factory gives you an indention right here in the center 
for the grommet. This is where the factory put it, so we're gonna just drill that indention out. Not these, these are spot welds. And right here in the center, you'll be able to feel it. It's a little indention. I usually start with a regular drill bit, like a quarter inch or so, and drill it out, then use a step bit and bring it on out to the proper size. Now, if you have a 90 degree drill, this will make it better. But I just use my ratchet and put a step bit in the socket here and do it that way. And for this hole here, this hole here needs to be drilled out to an inch size hole. So what I'll do is I'll go in from the inside of the door now and finish bringing it out with this step bit from the inside because there's not enough room to get in here to do it from this side. And I take a piece of tape and just mark on here my one inch mark. That way I'll know where to stop. And then you just want to take something like a round file and clean up the hole so you don't tear your new rubber grommet when you're putting it in. Now we just feed our plug in. And push the grommet in. And it's gonna be a tight fit, so you might have to go in from inside the door and work it a little bit too. Good tight fit, now we can do the cab. All right, so same thing again. You got a, a little indention right here in the cab that the factory marked for you to drill out and that hole has to be a three quarter size. So again, I'm gonna start with my regular drill bit then go to a step bit. And if you want to put some tape on your door and cowl so you don't mark it up, but I'm just really careful. That way I make sure I don't hit it. And same thing again, file the hole, and then we can put the grommet in. Like that. Slide our grommet up into place and push it in. Another thing you can do if you got a little if you have a little bit of problems with your grommet, is put a little bit of like WD-40 or something on the seal would help it slide in easier. But generally, once you drill them out, they will just pop right in. Pretty easy. Just like that. All right, so once we got all that put in place now, now we're gonna just plug this right here up. It simply just plugs right into each other. Just like it's supposed to. And this sheath here will slide like this grommet's not made to the sheath, so it'll slide back and forth. You can pull it, pull it out if you need to, to help tighten this up, for instance. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up, when I pull my dash apart, I'm gonna reach in here and I'm gonna pull that wire through some more. So I'm gonna end up pulling some of this slack out to draw this up tight. And like I said, you pull it, you can see that wire move like that. So do that, but now you got excess, so you gotta push it in through the inside. So now we gotta get the dash tore apart so we can get that all straightened out. Okay, so now is a good time while you got this apart to go ahead and grease your door latches and window regulator and get all that done now while you got full access. I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and clean up any trash I have in the bottom of my door, vacuum it out, clean it, grease everything, and I'm gonna go put the door panel back on. We got the speaker installed, it's plugged in, the wires are ran. Everything else now is gonna contain just right here inside the dash, and that's it, nothing else. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all cleaned up and go ahead and put my door panel back on, and then we'll come back after I get the dash tore apart, after I get all this put together and get the dash tore apart. So we'll be back in a minute. Alrighty, so I went ahead and got the entire harness installed, so I'm gonna show you how I got it routed and everything. I, I, I spared you the pain of watching me put this thing in cause it's a little tedious, but once I show you how I got it, you know, it's easy. You understand what I mean. So we start over here. 
and you can see here is the original harness. Now I cut that plug off and the reason being is because I hooked up the two grounds together and I was getting interference with the speakers. They were real staticky, especially when bass hit and you had the volume up. So I cut the plug off and spliced into here. You can find out which ground goes to what speaker if you hook up one speaker. Obviously your white is your uh, right side and your orange is your left side. Hook up one speaker and then take one ground and touch it and see which speaker plays and you'll know which ground goes to what. I did that and that told me which ground went, went where, which if you look, it's kind of, let's if I can get it in here. If you look, it's like these, it's like this purple and this white one go together and this purple and orange one go together by the way they're kind of in there. You see how they are? It's kind of like they go together anyway like that. So it's pretty easy to tell which one goes where. So I got that. Here's that Here's that wiring harness. It comes up and I got it ran into this factory loom here that's mounted to the dash. And it goes through that loom right there. And goes all the way across to the glove box. The other end comes down and it's routed right through these factory looms again. And it's plugged in right here. It plugs in right there. And then obviously that goes out and plugs into the, goes to that hole and plugs in to the door. It comes out right there and to the door. So now let's go to the passenger side and see how that's routed. So now over here on the passenger side, you go to remove your glove box. I just pushed it back. You can see right here, here's my factory plug. And I'm gonna have to do something. I'm gonna pull a little bit more of this slack out so then it's a little bit tighter over here. But again, same concept. I got, it ran up into that wire loom right there. And it comes over. And again, it goes into that wire loom. And runs across. Across the, above the uh, duct work. And right there, so, and it's easy as that. And that's really all there is for that. And that's how you install it. You just plug it in. And now it's just a matter of putting all this back together. All righty guys, we're all done. Everything's all put back together now. Everything works great, looks great. Can't even tell it was ever taken apart. I love how this just, it looks factory, it looks stock, which it is, but it looks like it came in this truck. Can't even tell that it was added. And it looks great. It don't bind in the door or anything. When you close it, it folds up out of the way like it's supposed to do. So that's great. And uh, really, really happy with the way this turned out. Now, there you see, look through the grill, how the speaker looks. Looks really good. And it, these speakers just barely, I mean, just ever so slightly push out against this. But you can't really tell. Like, you put it up here, this is pretty much flat. And like I said, I got screws holding mine in. But it's pretty much flat to begin with. So if you have just regular clips holding yours on, it's not like it's going to push the door panel out. It'll be just fine. Because, I mean, it's like, you can see how I still got a little bit of give there. So, I mean, it's not, it's not pushing up against it real hard. I don't know how well you can see. I think we'll see it's not bowed out or nothing. It still looks flat and straight and even. So, like it's supposed to be. So, yeah. It fits good. It sounds great. I've already tested a couple of times and had this thing just turned. I can't turn it wide open. I mean, I, I just can't. It's too loud, you know, for the cab of this truck. But it, it sounds great. I'm very, very pleased with how that turned out. And here's that plug I cut out of there. You can see I was talking about how the factory harness uh, before the radio has the two ground wires and then that. And then it only has the one ground wire over here. So, yeah, I just cut it out. I tried it and it didn't work. Like I said, it has static in it. So I just cut it out. And another good thing to look at, without even having to test the speakers, these two go together, and then these two go together. So that's the easy, uh, easy way to tell right there. So that, that ground goes to this side, which would be your passenger side, and this ground goes to this side, which would be the driver's side. All right, guys, that's it. That's all there is for this one. It was a pretty simple install. I mean working around having to drill those holes without pulling the doors off could be a little bit of a challenge but if you do it the way i showed you it's 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 a it's a breeze there's no there's no problem with it like you know i had to figure out a way to work around it like extend that step bed out for me so i could get to it because my drill was hitting the cow in the door that's why i put that adapter piece on there and used the socket with that uh step bit because it pushed it out further kind of adding an extension to it basically is all it is so it worked good for me that's all i had to do to make it work and 
you see it, it worked fine. So three quarter inch hole for the one in the cab and then a one inch hole for the one in the door. So just remember that. And uh, simple, easy install, and I'm very pleased with it. Shout out to Dennis Carpenter for another great product. Everything that they make is great. I've never really had any real issues with anything that they make. So uh, again, I did have to cut that plug off, which I showed y'all that. And the only reason for that is I'm guessing cause the radios, like this retro sound radio puts out more power than a stock radio and all. Back in the day when you had just a stock AM, FM radio stereo that came in these trucks, one ground was probably enough cause they weren't high output speakers. They weren't out high output radios, so it was fine. But now with this more high power output radio that I'm pushing, it's not like a drastic radio, but it's, it puts out more on a stock radio. And then the speakers that I have, I guess it just needs the individual grounds. So, as like I said, at first it would have static, real bad static. And I knew it was the front speakers causing it because obviously I never had a problem before. But if I turn the radio all the way to the rear speakers and cut the front ones off, it went away. It was fine. So I just cut that plug off and ran the grounds uh, separate, you know, one ground for each side like it's supposed to be anyway. And now it's crystal clear, no popping, no static no nothing it's great don't matter how high you turn it no breakup no nothing so i'm very pleased with that and also the speakers are very good so if you you know if you're interested check those speakers out like i said they install easily with only very light modification to the speaker and there's nothing to it so and also this boom mats they made i, I tell you what it's nice because there's no rattling of the vibrations now metal to metal like you would if you just boiled the speaker in and it also helps force more of the sound of your speaker out into the cab where it's supposed to be instead of being echoed and lost inside the door. So definitely pick it, pick up some of those and it's well worth the money. I think it was like, I don't even know. I want to say it's like 10 bucks, maybe, you know, for those boom mats or whatever they call it, 10, $12, whatever. Cheap insurance is, it, you know, it keeps it dry. So if you have leaking seals and water don't get on the speaker and mess it up or nothing like that, it's simple install, easy. So anyway, not going to ramble on. Just wanted to show you that. I hope you all enjoyed it. And yeah, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. I'd appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave me in the drop box down below and I'll get back to you as always. And that's all there is for this one. So until next time, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.